This is Matt from NoCodeTrainer.com. I hope you liked this video and you can take what you learned from it and incorporate it into your own bubble application. If you do, please make sure to click like and leave a comment in the comment section with how you'll use it inside of your application. If you'd like to be kept up to date with more tips and tricks you can use in your bubble app, please subscribe to our channel and be sure to check out NoCodeTrainer.com for more exclusive content. In this video, we're going to cover how you can get animations into your bubble app using Lottie files. So what we have on the display right here is a Lottie file provided animation. So let's jump into how we get this set up inside of our bubble app. First thing that you'll be doing is going into Lottie animations where they have their different animations that you can choose from. You saw that I had this animation already on the page. I'm going to work with a different one now. I'm going to click on to one that I like. And once I click on to it, I can scroll down into here and I can say, use this animation in HTML. When I click on to that, it's going to open up another web page for me. And on this page, I can make some changes to some settings. And you can see here, uh, we've got some different settings as drop down menus. There's not a lot going on there though. We have settings here that you can do more manual stuff to change the size of the actual uh, image itself as it would be displayed inside of your bubble application. You can choose a faster or slower animation speed. Higher numbers are faster and you get into decimals, you'll start going slower than the original setting of one. Now, we also have here the ability to select some choices, the, the way that it will actually function. Now, one thing that I always wanna make sure of is I get rid of the controls. You can see over here, that's gone now. So if I click that back, you can see this control. I don't want those displayed at all on my applications pages. I do want it to autoplay and I do want it to loop. So for me, I'm generally just keeping these two here checked and that's good enough. Now, what we're looking for here is this generated code. And in this generated code, you can actually see some of the different choices that we had up here in terms of customization actually on display. And it's not too difficult to read into. So one of the first ones that you can see here is a parameter name of background and the value is transparent. And we have this background color up here and transparent. So if I actually wanted to make a change into here, I would be able to just click onto this. And as I'm changing it inside of this, pay attention to that code, the background hex colors are consistently changing, right? So you can see that if you wanted to, you could, instead of having to utilize the formatting that they provide us here for making these changes, you can actually make those changes directly inside of your bubble application. Now, without going into too much detail about a more uh, advanced feature with making those changes, you can essentially get it so that you have one way of changing the background color for all of the different files that you might utilize within your application. I, but in terms of setting them up here, I'm gonna to wanna to just get this back to transparent. I don't want any background. So let me try to spell transparent correctly. Seems like I did not. And let's change the E, there we go. It's one of those hard words for me to spell. So looking at animation speed, we've got one X and then here we have this parameter of speed. So that's that one. If I change it up here, you can see how it's gonna change right down there. So the other parameters that we're making changes to manually up there, like the actual size, you can see we've got the width 50 and the height 50 as well. So those are two different things that you might want to be able to just make changes to on the fly within your bubble application as you're trying to put it onto your page in the correct way. And then when we see the last section, we have loop and autoplay. Those are coming from these two checkboxes. If I add in there controls and hover, you can see how hover loop controls gets added into there. So you can make you know, changes once you've brought it into your bubble application. So for right now, I'm fine with this. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this code and I'm gonna get into my bubble application now. I'm gonna get from my bubble application, a HTML element. 
And then I'm just going to draw this out onto the page. And inside of here, I'm going to paste that code that I just copied over from Lottie. And now this should show up and you can see right there, it's up in the top corner. Now this element as an HTML element has a width of 246 and a height of 216. So let's put that down to 50 and 50, the same that we have set on that actual image. And so you can see how it's centered right there for us. You know, it's right in the center. Uh, so if I wanted to expand this out, unless I wanted to go to 250 and 250, I'll just come right into here and make that change right there into the code and it will show up for me at that larger size. Now, one major thing that you want to be able to probably focus on making changes to inside of Lottie, where it's only possible to make those changes, is to the colors to be able to get them maybe to fit into the branding of your application. So when you go into Lottie and you are actually in that first selection phase, so when you have seen what you want to use and you go ahead and just click on it here on this same pop up with it, you have a option of edit layer colors. And this is where you would want to go into to be able to make changes to the colors inside of Lottie. And they have it set up pretty well in terms of being able to figure out, you know, what's what. And you can see here we've got basically three colors that we're working with. Well, black included, we've got four. So I, with the two main colors here, you can see that they are just sort of lighter and darker versions of each other. So I've got on a application or a website that I like to use to be able to see how things uh, maybe match up. I've got a color that I'm going to work with here. And so I'm just going to select this color. And then I'm going to go into another application to just get a sort of lighter version of it so that I have the two different main colors that I'll want to use. So what I'm going to do now is come back into this uh, Lottie area here, and I'm going to use for the lighter color what was my main color. And yeah, you need to click on it and just add it right there into the hex code there, and then press on update. And then once you do it, you'll see those changes take place pretty much immediately. So here, I'm just going to click on update. And now, oh, there we go. Uh, it seems like they had kind of grouped them together for me automatically. That was something I wasn't expecting. So let me come back into this color space, and I'm going to grab a darker version of that color. So let's go ahead and grab this one. And when I get back into here, I'm going to click into that and paste in an update. Okay, so they didn't do that automatic grouping for me on the other color. That was the same. I was kind of hoping they would have. And let's update that. Okay, so I'm, you know, good with this right now. I'm satisfied with just making those simple color changes on it. And now I need to actually get this uh, out and be used inside of my application. So how can I do that? Well, you need to get the Lottie URL to be able to do that. So on this page in the top left, there is a Lottie URL. That's for the original one. That's not what we want. We want this one that we just created. So down here, we're going to say upload to Lottie's. And when we click on to this, we're going to say upload to my previews. And once we've clicked on upload to my previews, you'll be able to close out of uh, Sorry, you're going to be able to see how they have it. Uh, it looks like they've got this set up in such a way that there's code that you would expect you had already removed. And, and you don't need to worry about that because we're not taking the entire code. We're just taking the link. So right here, you can just click right into that and copy that into your keyboard. Come back into your bubble application. And what you're going to be looking for is where it says Lottie Player Source. In quotation marks, they have a link. And this is what you're going to replace. And so right now, when I click in here and paste over my new link, you'll see that change take place right away. So that's how you are going to be able to find an animation inside of Lottie files that you'll want to use inside of your bubble application and make changes to it and be able to get it to have the branding colors that you want, the sizing that you want and even make some other alterations to it with speed and such. Now, in terms of looking at a further aspect of this, 
how might you use them in your bubble application? A lot of times you'll see things like this on a home page, a landing page. Also, these are really useful for a loading screen. One of the big issues that people tend to complain about with bubble is a page load speed. And I think what a lot of people forget about is what their own experience is like with major websites. They feel like they're super fast, but not all of them actually are. And a lot of them are just doing the right kind of technique to be able to make you think that it is super fast. One of the easiest ways to do that is to show a loading screen. It might be up for two or three seconds, but those two or three seconds that they're looking at an animation like this, they're you know not paying attention to the amount of time that it's taking to see the results of a search or any other sort of data processing that you might do. So these are very useful inside of a loading screen. You can do some sort of simple loading screen with these by putting these into a pop-up. You can make it so that your pop-up is gonna just kind of gray out things. You can do stuff where you have them in a group that's hidden and then you use hide or show techniques based off of when a repeating group list might be having some data set into it for a display. Uh, there's a lot of different approaches you can take for that, but definitely a big benefit to these are to get them in as loading screens. So hopefully this is helpful and you'll be able to make use of these inside of your own bubble application. Thanks for watching the video. Hope that you found this helpful. If you'd like to be able to get editor access, please make sure that you check out the site, nocodetrainer.com. The link is in the description to the video where you'll be able to gain access into the editor and be able to check out how things were set up within the application itself.